Hey guys, welcome to the 10th episode of Top of the Chops. We've got another special one today. I'm sure you've heard of the 99-year-old legend, Captain Tom Moore. Not only has he raised over £28 million for the NHS, he's now got a number one single, so we're gonna take a little look at it today. So the song is called You'll Never Walk Alone and this particular song has gone through a bit of an evolution throughout the years. It started in 1945 when it was a show tune for the musical Carousel. Then Jerry and the Pacemakers did a version in the 60s and this version we're looking at today is Michael Ball and Tom Moore. There's also a Premier League football club that used this song as their theme tune but I forget what they're called. Okay, so seeing as this is a very orchestral song and um, being that it's from a musical, I think the best way to look at this is breaking it up just into a chord song really. So I'll show you the main lead melody at the end, but I really want to look at this as, as if you kind of got an acoustic guitar, you're sat with family and it's almost like a sing-along. Um, this is one of those tunes that you could literally get out on an acoustic guitar and everyone will sing along. Um, so yeah, I'll just kind of show you each of the chords for each of the sections. Now this version of the song, it's almost like there's a, a verse and a pre-chorus that are the same length, and then the chorus. Now, the verse and the pre-chorus the first time round, and even the chorus, I think, are all down a tone. So I think it's in B flat major. Um, I'm not gonna show you each of those, I'll just show you the final part, which is in C major. It's easier to play as well because it's in C major. Um, but yeah, if you want to play the beginning part as well, all you've got to do is transpose that down a tone into B flat and just kind of move all the chords down two frets in a way. Or you know what you're doing with your transposing, hopefully. Um, so yeah, if we look at a kind of C major chord, it's in six, eight. So you get that sort of one, two, three, four, five, six. Which is really good for an acoustic guitar kind of song. I know I don't have an acoustic guitar at the minute, but I don't mean you have to play it on an acoustic. It's more the fact that it's a solo guitar piece that you could just play along and sing along with. So yeah, for that reason, it's really kind of cool with the 6-8 because it almost gives it its own pulse. When you're arpeggiating the chords, you get the kind of tempo and the vibe. <laughs> So yeah, this is how the verse starts, then it moves to a G. I use the top half of the bar chord here, the E shape. Goes down to F. Back down to C. Back up to G. And then a slight twist, we've got G minor. Okay, so this is where it actually changes key. I didn't yeah, tell you at the beginning that this changes key quite a bit and there's some accidentals in there. It's very um, chromatic, so the reason the chords might not be specifically in the key is because they're accenting notes that move chr chromatically through the chords, okay? I'll explain it a bit more as we go into those sections, but yeah, this is just straight up changing key. It goes from that G major to a G minor and then it modulates to B flat major. <laughs> Okay, but it comes in on the D minor chord. So straight after that, kind of G to G minor. So it goes D minor to B flat major, up to F major, back down to D minor. Okay, and then the second half of this is basically your chromatic rundown, well it's not all chromatic, but this is where the notes move through nicely. So you've got B flat major, A minor, G minor, F major, and then E major. Okay, so that rundown is quite in interesting. It's going through all the chords kind of diatonically until you hit that E major, okay? Now, I think what they're going for there, other than it sounds really nice, you know, some of these chords that where you think, oh, that should be an E minor chord if we're in this key, or to be honest, that you know, B flat major, the E is tritone from B flat major. 
So it's kind of odd in itself, but when you're running down chords like that, the, the notes in the chord that aren't the E do make a lot of sense, um, and it does sound really, really nice. So, for example, from that F major, is it F major the one before? Yeah. Moving it down to E major, you're getting that A to a G sharp there. So again, that chromatic thing I was talking about. Now, you can think of these chords as kind of accidental chords, but there is a purpose behind them. And a lot of the time, you know, if I'm coming up with chords like this, not that I'm saying I could write a song like this, but um, I do it by accident. A lot of the time, it's kind of what I hear. Um, with this, it's a big orchestral piece, though, so you'd imagine it was kind of written out and thought about. But um, yeah, I, you know, some of these chords you can actually get just by accident and think, oh, that sounds nice. As an example, I like doing a lot of the um, kind of the, on the fourth chord of a key. So say we're in G major, if we play C major, then C minor, and then G major. It's just real kind of nice cadence. And it's, yeah, all about where you're landing. So that's what's going on with these chords. It's it's not about, oh, this is a wrong chord or whatever. It's, it's kind of how it's landing and how it's resolving. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of showing you each of these chords as you go so that you can add those in. It will sound weird if you're trying to work things out by ear. A lot of the time, you'll put the record on and think, oh, why can't I get this chord? And a lot of it is because it might be just one change in a chord or one note in a chord that technically you shouldn't do diatonically, but it ends up working really, really well. So without me blabbering on too much about that sort of stuff, I'll just carry on showing you the chords. So um, yeah, where did we get to? The rundown, wasn't it? The... And that's your verse, basically. Then it goes into the pre-chorus. Uh, now, this is a bit more kind of um, open. It's moved back to C major, but you've still got that E in there. This time, I think it uses an E dominant seven. So it starts off F major. E dominant seven. Then back to C. And D minor. Back to your C. E minor. And then this is a really interesting thing. It does like almost like a, it feels like triplets because it's six, eight. It's actually holding for like a crotchet each one um, as it runs down. It still keeps the tempo though, but it might be a bit more free time. Um, I haven't tried putting a metronome to this whole song to see if it's all straight or whether it's free time. I'd imagine it's free time for this sort of stuff. So yeah, it kind of runs down like this. So you get that one, two, one, two, one, two, da, da, and then back into your um, six, eight kind of feel. Um, so from the C. Okay, so it's coming down F major, E minor, D minor. And then I do my G major again, but I put my little finger on the A. So it's like a add nine and then resolve it and then resolve it to the G. Now these chords are kind of what I'm hearing. Um, I've only literally looked at it today because um, I'm filming on the day that he's gone number one. But uh, yeah, I kind of, that's what I hear. It might be slightly different. There might be different inversions and things like that. And to be honest, I think there is a guitar in the song, but you can't really pick it out as much. So this is how I would play it if I was doing like a sing-along, if I was playing these chords and have my family singing the song along, um, then this is how I would do it.
Now that leads straight into the chorus. Now this is obviously the, the big catchy part, the sing along part. Um, and it's back in C major, but again, there's something really interesting in this. So it starts off in a C major. This time I change it to my A shape. So on the A string, third fret. And that's because we're throwing in an augmented chord. So again, this is what I hear. It might not be 100% right, but you can definitely use these chords to play along. Um, so all we're doing there is we're keeping that shape, but we're changing that fifth for a sharp five with our little finger. And then that means we have to swap our bar for these middle and third fingers. Okay, so then we go to F and a D major this time. And again, it's that kind of chromatic thing. Our F is up here. So now it's climbing to an F sharp there. Normally that should stay on F if it's a D, uh, if we're in C major, shouldn't it? The, the D minor would be our second chord, but this we're turning it major. Um, but yeah, that's all I can think is kind of doing this chromatic stuff quite a lot. Um, and that just keeps the movement going in the song and, and the harmony is just really, really nice. Um, so yeah, you've got that and then you've got the you'll never walk alone part. So this is leading up into it, it's that. <laughs> Okay, and then the chords move quite fast. They change on um, every beat, basically. So. so we go from C major, and then I just do from E minor with my middle finger there on the D string. Okay, then A minor. And then I do a D slash F sharp. And it's just a D5, so I'm not adding that F sharp in the top. I'm just adding it below. So technically still a major D major chord, um, but a slash chord. And then it ends on a G. And holds that for a bit longer. And then there's a different version of that Never Walk Alone as well. So um, afterwards it goes. Just for that nice perfect cadence at the end, um, the G to the C. So it's C, E minor again, and then it's F, G, C. And that's basically the chords for each of the three sections. Now, some people might call that verse and pre-chorus just one long verse, but I, I like seeing it as a, a movement through each section, especially if you're kind of thinking of it in classical ways. Now, um, obviously the chords that I've mentioned are quite interesting. There's some chords in there that you might not know, and there's a lot of chords. It's not like it's staying the same all the way through. So what I'm gonna do for this video is just write the chord names out underneath in the description if you need them. You'll probably be able to find them online as well, especially seeing as this song's number one now. I think everyone's got, gonna wanna learn it, which is cool that we're doing these videos. That's the reason we do it as well. You know, There's gonna be a lot of people searching for songs that are number one at the time, guitar players, and there's not that much resources out there for songs that aren't specifically guitar-led. Uh, so hopefully this video series has helped anyone looking for guitar parts for songs that don't necessarily have guitar parts. You shouldn't be restricted just because you play guitar and there's no guitar parts on a song. You should be able to learn them as well and that you, know, you can put it on any instrument, so that's fine. So yeah, I think um, in terms of learning those chords, it might be better if I put the chords below, I'll do that and then you can kind of play along with them and get it all cohesive. Like I said at the beginning, there is modulation throughout the song. So I think the first verse through to the end of the first chorus is all in B flat major. Um, so you'll have to accommodate for that. Like I say, if you're having a sing along, you'll probably just stick in one key anyway. Okay, so just really, really quickly, I'm gonna show you the lead part for the chorus. So, 
kind of think of it still in C major, but I'm doing everything kind of legato on um, the G string. So I slide in from seventh fret on the G string and go slide to nine, back down to seven, then to five. And it comes in just before the bar starts. So you want to land on the one basically, so. Okay, and then it does the same thing, but slightly different. So it's just an extra slide from seven to nine. Here. And straight down to the five again, so. So it does a seven, five, four, five, seven. And I grace note slide that as well. And then we go five, seven, nine and then it hangs on the nine for a long time. So it's nine, 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 seven, nine, with the slide. And then it goes up higher for the last part, so seven, eight on the B string. So it's eight, and then nine on the G string, down to the five again. And then I just kind of do a slide up to the nine from the seven, back down to the seven. And then 10th fret on the D string to finish that kind of C major triad. Obviously, I hope you enjoyed that and what a great thing Captain Tom has done for the NHS. Thanks for watching again and making a very special 10th episode. We'll see you again next week for sure.